I want to talk to you today about why the pandemic is not ending. Um, I'm not going to get into my beliefs on this whole pandemic thing and whatever else. Um, people that know me know what my opinions are. But uh, what will be the, the way that this whole thing stops, um, regardless of what you believe about the whole thing, why is it not ending? Why is it continuing? You know, they were telling us early on this year, 2020, it's December 2020 now, but they were telling us back in April, well, it's just going to be a few weeks. We need to do a few things and, and it, you know, we'll, we'll flatten the curve and, and all this other stuff and it, it should be over. It might flare up a little bit in the fall, but probably not. And, but it's still going on. Okay. Why is it not ending? Well, I'm going to show you from the King James Bible today why it's still going on. Isaiah verse no, or chapter 9 Back to the Old Testament, we're going to we're going to start out here in uh, going to start out here in Isaiah chapter nine. Pretty cold in here, so sorry if my uh, mouth isn't working exactly all that great. Um, don't have the the heat on all the time here at the office, so sometimes it's a little bit cold in here. Isaiah chapter nine. It was about twelve degrees Fahrenheit outside this morning, so. Should give you an idea of the, the kind of temperatures we're dealing with. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 13 through 21. Some very interesting things here tying in God dealing with Israel, but yet there's a lot of instruction and righteousness here. There's reproof, there's correction for us today, for America as a nation. How God will deal with a nation that has departed from Him and turned against His word. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 13. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither did they seek the Lord of hosts. Who is really the one who's smiting the American people right now? You say, well, it's the coronavirus. It, was, it happened in China and it came here, Wuhan and all this other. It came here and everything else and we're, we're trying to fight it and we have this and we have that. Um, no, God's actually the one that's judging. This whole thing is God's judgment. I see a lot of people, is it God's judgment? I don't really know. These church people, you know, is this God's judgment? Of course it's God's judgment. Uh, a nation like America that has aborted, you know, untold millions and millions of babies and, you know, and I mean, just look at all the evil that this country has done. The, the greatest exporter of, of pornographic filth on the planet. Uh, it's terrible the things that this country has done and the, the wars and, the, and all the other illegal things that have been done by this country. And God's just supposed to be up there in heaven saying, well, I can't do anything to stop this. See, when bad things come into your life, the very first thing that it should enter into your mind is, God, why is this happening to me? Am I doing something wrong? Are you trying to show me here? Are you giving me a punishment, a way of warning here? that uh, your ultimate judgment is coming. You see? And yet the American people don't think that way anymore. The people of the world don't think that way anymore. Verse 14, Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. The prophet that teacheth lies. How about that? How many uh, prophets out there like Kenneth Copeland have been teaching people the lies of the prosperity gospel? That God wants to make you rich beyond your wildest imagination. See, I have a $20 million jet, Kenneth Copeland, and he lives in this huge big house. Look what God's done for me. He's a liar. He's a con artist. You see? And the Lord's going to cut him off. The Lord's going to say, I've had enough of you. He's going to cut them off. Um, verse 16, for the leaders of this people calls them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. How about that? All the stuff that's been going on, and you shut down this, and you shut down that in the economy. We're dealing with simple math here. You can't keep doing that. You can't shut businesses down for almost a year and expect everything to be okay and we'll just come back and everything's going to be fine. You can't do that to a fragile economy. You can't do that with people that are constantly perpetually in debt. It's just not possible. Um, what's going on? 
Well, the, if you read over in the book of Romans, chapter 13, the powers that be are ordained of God. God puts in these wicked rulers to punish a nation. God allows them to come in and, and do evil things and whatever else because the people, they don't want the Lord to rule over them. So the Lord says, okay, here's a corrupt leader. Now God can take that leader. He can take his heart. The, you know, the, the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord and he can turn them wherever he wants, essentially. I'm paraphrasing the one verse. But the Lord can, can take a leader and he can tell them to do right or wrong. But when people are being wicked, the Lord's going to use those leaders to do things that are bad to the people, to make them lose their freedom, to make them lose their liberty, ultimately their lives, if the people don't repent and turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and as a preacher, I'm very much conscious of people's souls and eternal things. And, you know, I try to witness as often as I can, and I pray to the Lord when I go out in public and whatever, that to Lord, please give me opportunities to, to preach the gospel to somebody. And I just, all I can get, you know, with, with just what, everything that's going on is they're not ready yet. The people aren't ready yet in this country. They're not ready to turn back to Jesus Christ. They don't need him yet. It's just, oh, we're going to have a stimulus bill. We're going to have this thing coming out. We're going to have, uh, things are going to get better. Things are going to look, 2021 is going to, going to be the year of recovery. They don't need Jesus Christ. It's all, well, if we get Joe Biden in or if Trump stays in or if we get Nancy Pelosi to get this bill passed and we get to this, that all this different stuff, then we'll be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Why don't you turn to Jesus Christ? Why don't you turn to the Lord of glory, Almighty God, and say, God, our, I know our, our country's been wicked. I know we've, we've done some really horrible stuff. Um, God, please have mercy on this nation. God, please. But they aren't doing it. For the same reason that ancient Israel didn't do it. Verse 17, Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. The kind of stuff that's been going on this year just would have boggled people even a year ago, much less 10, 15, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. The things that people are falling for, it's just, it's folly. It's folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Now, there's two ways to look at that. His anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He's saying, come unto me. Come on, I'll help you. Or the other way is, you know, boom. <laughs> it says there, all this is anger is not turned away. Bang, bang, bang. But his hand is stretched out still. He's going to keep on hitting unless you repent. Two different ways to look at that thing. For wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thick, thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Very interesting because I think this year was also a lot of new records being set for fires out west. Isn't that interesting? And a lot of people talking about it's being done on purpose, these fires being done on purpose. And I think there's some good evidence of that. Um, companies setting them and people setting them and whatever else. I don't know. There's some very interesting things there. But again, you say, well, then it's just wicked. It's, it's, it's the Illuminati doing this thing or whatever else. Um, no, it's actually God. God is the one that's saying, you want to be wicked? You want to reject me? You hate my word? You mock my word? Okay, I have to punish you. I have to stop this. There's been enough evil. Repent. Oh, no repentance yet? Okay. Here's another one. Still no? Okay. And again, you ready to turn? Do you want me to put an end to this? Or do you want more of this? Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. And the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. 
you say, well, that's just, it's symbolic. It's a, well, it, you know, there's things in the Bible that are, you know, clearly symbolic and whatever. But I remember I have a book, I'm not sure where it is right now, but in my collection here somewhere, one of my books, and there was a, back in the 1800s, there were some men that were part of the British Naval Force and they shipwrecked off the coast, I think the Ivory Coast of Africa there. And they were basically taken in by Northern, Af Northern uh, Arab slave traders, white men from England, and they were going to be sold into slavery. And they were taking them out through the, you know, the caravan going out through the desert. And these men, these British sailors were getting so hungry and they were going mad because they didn't have anything to drink and they were in the hot sun. And they were actually starting to bite the, the, the flesh off their own arms. And the captain, the ship captain had to hit them and had to yell at them and things to stop them from cannibalizing themselves. You see, when God starts judgment on a people, when God starts his judgment on a nation, when he starts to smite them and hit them, it gets really bad. And if you think 2020 was bad, 2021, I promise you, is going to be even worse. I mean, right now, things there's so much that's, that's going to be ending here at the end of the month. So many people are going to be homeless find themselves out on the street. Why? They're not turning to Jesus Christ. Verse 21, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Boom. You say, well, well we've had enough. Okay, all right. The coronavirus thing has been, it's we've had enough, the pandemic thing, we've, we've had enough, all right? Stop with the just slam, slam, slam. Oh, it's not even begun yet. See, this is the, the 2020 is the softening up of the people. 2021 is when things are going to get bad. You say, well, that's not very good news. I, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I wish I could tell better news. Um, I wish I could say that, that, that everything's going to be okay. Don't worry, we've had a tough year. Next year's going to be better. You know, America's going to come back stronger than ever. It's not. It's not. And why? Because, and here's the point. You say, why would God, if God's a loving God, why? Here's the point. God has to send warning before he sends his judgment. God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. He's saying, I have to stop you from your wickedness. I don't want you to die and spend eternity in hell. That's prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't want you to go there. I have to stop you. I have to show you the wickedness I have of, of your ways out there. Stop. Turn to me. Call upon me. Think about me throughout the day. I mean, you are on God's earth, breathing God's air, eating God's food, wearing his clothing in houses that he has given people skills to build and think. You're on God's planet. Understand that. You say, well, I'm not. Okay, well, then I don't know where you're watching from, but, you know, whatever. Everybody's on God's planet. And everybody is going to be accountable to him. By him, by Jesus Christ, all things consist. And when I say Jesus Christ and God, I'm talking about the same being. All right, very important to get that. Now let's go to chapter 10, the very next chapter. Verse 1, Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, mandates, unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Huh, don't you love the wording of this archaic old King James Bible? That right grievousness which they have prescribed, prescription drugs, prescription vaccines, To, to turn aside the needy from judgment. Everything's going to be fine. All you got to do is just get your vaccine. All you have to do is just, you just take this and, and just socially distance yourself and whatever. Everything will be just fine. Don't worry about it. Or you turn to Jesus Christ. Hey, this, all this bad stuff out there and everything, you know, there's no stimulus coming. You better turn to the Lord and get down on your knees and fall before the Lord and repent. For your wickedness. Oh no, everything will be fine. We'll, we'll send you money. Tell you to stay at home and watch television and we'll send you checks. 
and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and they, that they may rob the fatherless. <laughs> what do you think is happening? It's a wealth transfer. Just incredible. And what will ye do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help, and where, where, where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. Without me, the Lord's saying, you need me. You need my help. No, it's okay. I'm good. We got it. We're Texas strong. We're America proud. We're, name it. I'm part of the Teamsters Union. I'm a ex-military. I'm a military veteran. Without me, you're nothing, the Lord says. Who's your help? It's okay, God. I have a good insurance policy. I've got it all figured out. Everything's all laid out for the future. Everything's great. No matter what happens to me, my family is going to be doing good because I have life insurance, health insurance, flood insurance, fire insurance, car insurance, 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 you know, whatever. Um, without God in your life, without the Lord Jesus Christ and you having a personal relationship with him, you have no hope. You have no promise of the future. Just as simple as that. Verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. The Lord takes up a foreign army and says, This army here, the Assyrians, they're the rod of mine anger. He sends in, time and time again throughout the Old Testament, the Lord sends in an army to go in and punish the Jewish people. And it's not just, oh, they, you know, oh, okay, oh, they came into the town and really scared us. There were military troops on the street and it was scary. Posse Comitatus has been overruled and, 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 you know, we've seen martial law and this is big. No, no. When the Assyrian came in there to Israel, ancient Israel, they killed them. They were killing them by the thousands, tens of thousands sometimes. It was horrible. And what did they do? They had to fall down on their knees and say, Oh, Lord God of hosts, there's sin in the camp. There's something going on. Lord, please reveal it to us. Please show us what it is. We need to have victory here. They would turn to the Lord. But today, people losing their businesses, people losing their homes, people losing all kinds of things. Who's falling down on their knees? Not very many. And by the way, I do believe that uh, China could invade this country, America, and destroy it. The Lord could raise up China to be the rod of mine anger, and the staff of their hand is my, mine indignation. You people don't want me? Okay, Chinese troops, come on in. Come on in. Guns, swords, tanks, bombs, bullets, whatever you want, have your way with the American people. People out there, a little flag, a little American flag, it's made in China, you know, and here come the Chinese troops, you know, and play a little I'm proud to be American sign or a little song there or whatever else. And, oh, they won't hurt us. We're God's country. Uh, you're going to find out. Verse 6, I will send him against an hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Like a bunch of dung out there on the road. Oh, there's an older woman that was killed by the Chinese troops. We got to bring the tanks down through here. Well, uh, it, stop the tanks, guys. Uh, let's, let's give this woman a decent burial. They're not going to do it. Just run right over. Oh, there's a little baby there. There's a family that was shot down by our troops oh well, whatever bring out the bulldozers it's getting a little bit hard to drive down this road let's just push them off to the side load them in a dump truck and take them out and dump them in a hole someplace that's what's going to happen to this country that's what's going to happen to you unless you repent unless you get right with god if you're saved god has a purpose god has a plan for your life if you're lost all bets are off 
as the old saying goes. <clears throat> Verse 7, Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. God is not willing that any should perish. God is not saying, oh, I'm going to enjoy this. I can't wait to destroy all the people in America. He's warning right now. He's sending warning. Hey, your business has been shut down. Hey, this has been gone bad or that's been go gone bad or whatever else. I'm trying to warn you people. Will you turn to me? Will you, will you come and, and kneel down and lower your stinking pride and, and humble yourself and get on your knees and say, God, we really need some help here. God, I'm sorry for what this nation has done. God, please help us. Will you do that? The American people are, no, we don't need that. We don't, we don't need Jesus. We don't need this stuff. We don't need this King James Bible. We don't need to live according to its precepts. The Lord will say, okay, then this is what's going to happen to you. Same thing that happened to the nation of Israel. Now let's go to the New Testament, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. And remember, Jesus Christ is God. So God is speaking to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. Here Jesus is speaking, speaking to the Jews, the same nation of Israel that, he's, that has always had problems throughout the Bible. Verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, the ones that were you know, saved essentially in his time there, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Do you want freedom? Do you want freedom? It's connected with this book. The founding fathers of this nation knew that. They weren't all saved, but they knew that freedom comes from a Bible, or to a Bible-believing people, a Bible-reading people. The, the uh, you know, they say the Judeo-Christian ethics and Judeo-Christian. Yeah, it's called the Bible. This is a Jewish book right here. It's written by Jews. Everybody in it that, that ever wrote anything is a Jew. Okay. Um, I'm not a Jew. I'm a German, Bavarian descent. But uh, I have to be connected to this book if I want freedom. If I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, I need to follow his word. You don't just say, well, it's a good book and there's some nice moral truths in it. And it's a, it's a good read. It's a, it's a classic of literature. Oh, what a beautiful classic book here. The, this, you know, reprint of the 1611. And I'll just kind of sit at my house someplace and that'll be that and whatever. And, and uh, no, it's more than just a museum piece, a nice pretty thing it sits around. You need to live by this book. Why? So that you can be free. Well, then what would the opposite be? You don't live by the word of God. You don't follow his word and his precepts and whatever else. You ignore this book and make fun of this book. Then you lose freedom. That's why this whole thing is continuing. Next we're going to look here at uh, verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ has to make you free. Without him in your life, without knowing him, without praying to the Lord, you're not going to have freedom. Period. Matthew chapter 11. We'll go here, and that's where we're going to conclude this. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am low, meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come unto Pfizer, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and they will give you a vaccination so that you can go back to your normal life. Come unto Congress. 
because they will give you a stimulus check. If you're laboring and heavy laden, if you have a lot of bills, if you're months behind in your rent or, or mortgage or whatever, and you're, you're in this forbearance thing and you're, and you've this, you're relying on these debt, these uh, moratoriums and whatever else and think, come unto Congress, come unto your uh, governor or your mayor or your whoever, come unto your health officials, come unto your doctor. No, it says uh, Jesus Christ speaking and he says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Don't forget who's smiting this country right now. Who's allowing these horrible, wicked things to happen. Who's allowing the folly and everything else that's going on with this whole thing. The, just the insanity of it all. Um, people need to come to the Lord. And I don't mean this some nice little, you know, get your spiritual house in order. And, and it just, you know... Just say a little prayer. and say, No, no. I'm talking about down on your knees. I'm talking about, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, show me what I need to clean up in my life. Hey, uh, I'm not talking about going to church, by the way, either. Don't do that. That's There's nothing in Scripture about going to church. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about you getting right with God. If there are things in your life that are displeasing, God, uh, um, I need to get rid of this stuff. Uh, and you know what, God? I'm not even sure if I'm going to go to heaven when I die. I don't know. I, I, I really don't understand a lot about the Bible. God, I don't like what's going on in this country. I'm a, I like freedom. And, and let me just take a little side note here. I like freedom. Okay? I believe in liberty of conscience. I believe that, the, that people out there in this, in this world, even lost people, should have freedom. I do not believe in tyranny. If uh, if the Lord gave me dictatorial power over this nation, I would not force people to do all kinds of things against their will. I believe in liberty of conscience. The people can worship whoever they want, however they want, as long as they're not threatening other people. That's what I believe in. You can't force conversion on people. That just doesn't work. You can't force certain standards and rules and whatever else on people. It, it, it doesn't work. All right? Um, you have to get people pointed to Jesus Christ and have Him straighten them out and have Him tell them what to do. I can't judge every sin that you have going on in your life. Maybe I could walk into your house and go around and say, that's sinful, that's wrong, you shouldn't have that, you shouldn't be doing this, what are you doing drinking that and this thing here and you... I could do that, but you know what? You can still hide sins that are going on. Dirty thoughts up here. Evil, horrible things in your heart. You can hide that stuff from me, but you can't hide it from Jesus Christ. And this is the whole point here. Righteousness, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is reproach to any people. Another verse of Scripture. Sin is what's going to bring this country down. Sin is why God is currently smiting this nation, why God is currently just hitting this country and making it worse and worse and worse. And each time he hits, he says, repent. Not yet. Okay. Repent. People don't want to repent. It's only going to get worse. And you say, well, the Bible prophesies it's going to get worse. Well, we don't know. Okay. We don't know that it's definitely, there's that we, it has to go this certain way because we're so close to the Lord catching us up. We don't know that. We have no idea. It could be a long time yet. We have no idea. Um, and so to say that, oh, it, it has to just, it has to get worse, Brother Brian. There's just no hope. We'll just sit back and just say, well, we, let's not fight the evil. It's just, it's here. It's prophesied. It has to happen. That could still be off in the future, quite a few years. All right. Uh, yes, I do believe we are in the end times, but you know what? The, the catching up of the body of Christ might not be for a long time. Uh, there's no scripture telling you when it's going to happen. All right, so don't hide behind that. You know, the, the Lord is going to be taking up his bride and it's, it's imminent. It could be today, it could be this afternoon and whatever else. And, uh, people are using that as a crutch. A lot of people are using that. So let's not bother fighting what's going on. Let's not bother trying to turn people against sin and whatever else. Let's not call out sin and because it's just, this is the way it is. The Lord's going to just catch us out of here and everything's going to be fine um, for the body of Christ. 
Uh, no, study church history. All right. And I'm not ever going to go back against, you know, the what people would call the pre-trib rapture. That's I've proved it for so many years. You know, it's that's what the Bible teaches, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble, certainly. But what I'm saying is, that's Bible doctrine. What I'm saying is, from from here we when we are here, December 2020, till when the catching up happens, I have no idea how long that's going to be. It might not be real soon. It could be a while. Okay? So please get that thing sorted out in your mind that we do need to fight. You know, I mean, even if you want to go with the scripture, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. We are supposed to hinder the movement of Antichrist. That's what we're supposed to do. And if we're not doing that, then we're not doing our job. If we're not speaking against sin, then we're not doing our job as Christians. We're not to be partakers with the lost world. We're supposed to be there and say, hey, you know what? We're going to fight corruption. We're going to fight sin. That's what we need to do. So I do hope that this video has challenged you. Um, this has been a very difficult year for me as a preacher, as a man in ministry, and ultimately as a, as a husband and a father. I don't like seeing what's happening in our country at all. But you have to look at the many what people would call the silver lining in this whole thing. Um, the bars have been shut down. That's a good thing. Uh, people are losing things, so they're going to, they're, the time of them maybe coming to a point of repentance is getting closer, where people have lost everything. Now they might actually feel that they need Jesus Christ, unlike in the past. Um, there's a lot of other things out there that, that have suffered majorly this year. And Ultimately, I'm hoping people, and of course the church building thing has been totally proved to be false, just a completely licensed, state-licensed, government-controlled system. The government says, shut down. The churches snap to attention and say, yes, sir. You know, they're false. They're false. They're fake. Like I've been preaching for years and people call me a nut because I preach against church buildings. Well, I think I've proved my point now. I think the Lord has shown what I was saying was right because it's in line with His Word. All right, so there are some good things to it. This coronavirus thing, this all this stuff that's happened this year. But ultimately, it's, it's an attack on freedom, which I don't like. And I'm hoping and praying that the body of Christ and, and even lost people out there, people need to have righteous standards. This nation once had standards that were righteous. Even the most Christ-rejecting person in the past had standards, better standards than the average churchgoer of today. And that's why God blessed America. God did great things for the American people. You have to turn. You have to turn back to the Lord. You need to get saved if you're not saved. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.